Chapter 1. You have only one life, and it is up to you to make it extraordinary. Some people seem to move from success to success, while others are stuck in a loop of pain, sadness, and distress. Some people also have a rich and vibrant faith that is taking them places, while others believe the same things but struggle with their beliefs and keep trying to reconcile them with their lives. These two sets of people exist everywhere and are like this because of the choices they have made. You need to figure out where you are before you can plot a course forward. The fact is, no map will take you where God wants to lead you. Yet, there are plenty of clues out there for living the significant and meaningful life that Jesus talked about. Your understanding of who you are and how God sees you is worth all the time and energy you'll put into the task. The trick to finding the real you is to figure out what is right after all the distractions, misstatements, and misunderstandings have been eliminated. Your relationships play a big role too. Some people are easy to connect with. If you want to achieve great things, find a couple of these people to do life with. Also, find a couple of difficult people to engage with love. Don't make them projects. Make them friends. While no efforts will be more important than loving God and the people around you, your ambitions can be much broader, more expansive, and more varied than this. Achieving your ambitions isn't going to come easy, and it won't be cheap. Don't bail out, but remember the reason why you started. Whether you are confused over your life's choices, are already on the path to success, or are simply looking for ways to enrich your life, this summary is perfect for you. Keep reading to find out how you can dream big and bring those big dreams to reality. Chapter 2. Your dream blooms when you are surrounded by people who love you and are willing to pick you up when you fall. Goth met his wife Maria 35 years ago and was immediately smitten. After a long period of showing her how much he liked her, she started liking him back. In his pursuit of Maria, he learned the importance of having ambition and staying after it no matter how big or impossible it seemed. Goff knew what he wanted, why he wanted it, and decided what he was going to do about it. Pursuing your ambitions will take a big dollop of trust. God's got you. Take the risk. It's worth it. Bob Goff There is a change that happens when you are determined to go after something you want without doubting your capabilities. It's the point where you move from just thinking about an ambition to actually doing something about it. Through their marriage, Goff and Maria share a codependent relationship. Sometimes your ambitions don't work out. Resist the tendency to be discouraged or give up when it happens, because it is what you do next that says a lot about who you are. When faced with a difficult situation, some people begin to doubt their abilities and that of others around them. They do this for several reasons, but primarily because they're uncertain about who they are and how they fit into the larger picture of their lives. The truth is that everyone will make mistakes, and those mistakes will remind you of your humanity and help you be truthful with yourself about the fact that you don't have it all figured out. If you want to achieve your ambitions, you need to be anchored in God and connected to other people. When something wrong happens, you might have to start again. You may not get it right at the first few trials, but God is infinitely patient with everyone, and you need to understand this as you explore your ambitions. If you want to engage your ambitions like you never have before, self-identify as a student in all things. Everyone is an amateur in different fields, and the only way to success is to ask a lot of questions. Don't act like you have it all figured out. Doing this just means nobody will give you extra time. Instead, be humble, self-aware, and truthful. Chapter 3. Mistakes are inevitable. Be careful not to let them define you. Identifying and pursuing your ambitions is going to take a lot of courage, clarity, and more personal reflection. Organizing your thoughts around these three questions will help you accomplish what you haven't been able to make happen in the past. Who are you? Where are you? What do you want? These seem like simple questions, but are some of the most confusing questions you can ask yourself. They can be a mix of identity, desire, purpose, rejection, life experience, and hope all rolled into one. But if you are going to discover and realize your most beautiful and lasting ambitions, you have to lean into these questions. Jesus never had a problem with people who knew their shortcomings. He didn't tolerate rookies who pretended to have gone all pro and have it all figured out, but were just faking it. Bob Goff Maybe you know your ambitions, but have been too afraid to make any moves. Don't be discouraged. Get current with your ambitions, because in God's kingdom, you're supposed to be a new creation and there will be nothing new about you if everything remains the same. 
You don't have to keep doing what merely occupies, entertains, or numbs you. It is time to go after your dreams with renewed energy. Understanding yourself can be hard and even a little scary, but you should never let that discourage you. There is a massive power in self-awareness, and asking yourself who you are helps you discover that power. You have to figure out who you are before you can decide who you're going to be. Trying to be who everyone thinks or expects you to be can be exhausting. But you can define your identity by making it known to yourself and those around you that you're not going to let others decide who you are anymore. You're God's child. Mistakes remind you of your humanity and help you to be truthful with yourself about the fact that you don't have it all figured out. Being a child of God doesn't mean that you should make your journey about you, but you must discover all the things that matter to you. You can learn the core motivations behind your actions. You can figure out where they came from and take action necessary to make progress forward. Chapter 4 A great way to grow is by honestly evaluating your wins and losses. Figuring out where you really are is a big part of discovering who you are. Life can be wonderful. It can also be challenging. If you want to fast-track your ambitions, you need to be honest about where you are. If you're going to begin a race, you need a starting line because the only way to establish your journey is brutal honesty. If you have a problem, acknowledge it. You don't have to feel like you're disappointing God when you feel low. Also, you don't have to edit any part of your life because God is aware of everything and willing to lead you from wherever you are. An unexpected life is one that is merely on repeat. A life lived in constant anticipation, on the other hand, is one willing to do a load of self-examination. Bob Goff Everyone is somewhere, but not everyone is courageous enough to figure out where that is. Whatever your current state in life, own it. Then, write it down or say it out loud. Talk to someone about it, and if you can't find the words, write it out to them. When you tell people where you are, they can meet you there. Some of your ambitions are going to take more time or creativity to figure out. Don't quit on them. Instead, wake up to new ways to achieve them. Then, do what it takes so you're ready when your time comes. So ask yourself what you want. Start a list of the things that you would love to do. Do not pretend to be noble about the things that you want. Just be realistic about your needs. You have been curating your life without even knowing it for many years. You know what works and what doesn't. Trust what you've learned already and let it guide you. Accepting who and where you are is necessary for you to improve. The best engine to drive your ambitions is a strong sense of purpose. When you think you've found an ambition that you want, figure out why you want it and whether you want it badly enough to do what it takes to get it. Everyone is looking for meaning, but it is often lost behind the distractions, anger, hurts, and disappointments. Figure out what these have been for you and replace what you've settled for with what you want. Chapter 5. Change can get uncomfortable, but it is the only way that you can move from one stage to another. Sometimes you feel you have given Jesus control of everything, when what you've actually done is just surrender a few parts of your life. The simple but complicated fact is that he wants the whole room and everything in it, including you. You don't have to make following Jesus more complicated than he instructed. If you fill your life with Jesus and operate with love and grace, you'll be in the right place. Getting real is hard work, too. If it were easy, you would have been there and back a dozen times already. Bob Goff As you go through life, it is easy to let your capabilities decide who you'll be. But you should always remember that you are growing every day and your desires and interests can change and be revised along the way. According to Paul, one of the people who wrote a letter in the Bible, you're supposed to be a new creation every day. New creations continuously find new opportunities and desires to pursue. If you do not see new and bigger ambitions, you need to renew your mind. You can do this by making some changes as you evolve, not necessarily ditching the past altogether. Don't resist change when it comes your way. Embrace it, celebrate it, and keep up with it. At this point, your self-awareness is mature enough to know where lasting joy and hope comes from. It also reveals the things you are good or bad at. Everything you need is contained in your wealth of experience. And if you don't embrace new ones, you'll never get to the new creation your ambitions are guiding you toward. It is necessary that you constantly leave your comfort zone because nothing ever grows there. Many people look like they're awake while they're not. They walk around talking to people and doing jobs without being fully awake. You will know this is happening to you if you look back on your day and can't remember the conversations you've had or the things you've experienced. A form of sleepwalking may be getting in the way of your ambitions. The solution is as simple as it is hard. 
you need to wake up. Waking up means coming alive to who God has you to be. Practice walking around fully awake to yourself. Take notes, sing songs, smell the flowers, do the things that excite you. You're not doing these just for fun. It's one of the first steps as you wake up to some of your ambitions. Did you know, on December 17, 1903, two brothers named Wilbur and Orville Wright changed history by making a successful powered flight over the sands of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Chapter 6. The more available you are to help others through their needs, the more opportunities you unearth. Your availability to others is a good measure of how available you will be to opportunities that come your way. Availability is the most reliable predictor of success. You can't decide on your other features, but you can choose how available you will be. Availability can be a huge multiplier in your life. You will meet more people, get more invitations, and more opportunities. People don't follow vision. They follow availability. Bob Goff Your ambition should point toward the legacy you want to leave behind. Aiming for a legacy of generosity, where you give away your time and talent, isn't a bad place to start. Availability means more than just being available to everyone. You also need to stay available to yourself. Sometimes you go through a day doing all the things that are expected of you without really checking in with yourself. Checking in with yourself ensures that you remain in the right frame of mind at all times. Check-ins help you stay aware of what is going on within and around you while remaining undistracted by either. When you focus on your ambitions, you'll see more clearly which of your current commitments and choices are launching you forward and which ones stand in the way to your progress. You will find the path toward your ambition as you make yourself available to the people you meet along the way. As you make yourself available, be careful not to wear yourself down to the point where you have no energy to do your work. If you want to make progress toward your ambitions, live in constant anticipation of what might happen next. Look constantly for opportunities to work on your ambitions, and when an opening comes along, be ready to do something about it. Maybe the routines that once brought some positive rhythms to your days have become uninteresting. You will know this when you become generally listless and dissatisfied. If you want to press through the resistance you are facing, you need to do some thinking. You then need to take action to figure out what is keeping you stuck. You may have to break with some routines, identify some of the stress in your life, and get the tools you need to clarify your ambitions. Chapter 7. God created you to be unique. No one else is the same as you. Cultivating a community is not just a way to avoid loneliness. It is the method you can use to interpret your own life. If you have a solid community, grow it and let other people join in. Everyone needs a community, so you should be willing to connect with as many people as you can. The power of a community is immense because God gives you people so you can practice and understand your humanity and faith. If you want to access your ambitions, place a high value on community and kindness and you will find them. As you pursue your ambitions, you're going to need some hands to hold and some friends to love so you don't drift off. If you want to build this community, you have to do a better job of getting to know each other. It can be hard to be friends with people because of fear and insecurities. But if you're going to do new things, you need to start doing some old things differently. You need to stop hiding behind your appearance, titles, and accomplishments. Keep this in mind. If you take away what you're known for, whatever is left is who you are. Be the kind of person who is more interested in who someone is instead of what they do. Reach out a hand to people you meet even when you feel weak. Helping others even when you're tired is the kind of move that will shape your character while making you while making you available to the people or things that matter most to you. If you want to build an exciting community, you must be careful of comparison because sometimes it feels like everyone is doing better than you. You will never find your purpose when you You will never find your purpose when you compare your life to someone else's. Look into the mirror daily and tell yourself how beautiful, creative, and gifted you are until you believe it. On this path to discovering and living your most beautiful, lasting ambitions, you're going to have to activate your faith in order to drive your life. Bob Goff If you want to do something that honors God, stop trying to be someone else and just be yourself. Figure out your ambitions, understand, and own them. God made everyone uniquely gifted with different ambitions. Do not ask for permission. Just get busy with your life and build your dreams. Chapter 8. B 
Be specific about the little things that matter to you because they point to your larger ambitions. Picking an ambition can be difficult because there are so many options to choose from that you can get confused and not know where to begin. You need to pause and ask yourself which of your ambitions is better, long-lasting, and impactful than all the others. You shouldn't live your life based on chance, and you don't need to act like your ambitions are beyond your control. You have more control over your ambitions than you might realize. Achieving your ambitions includes two crucial points. Identify the ambition. Vet the ambition. Make a list of the many ambitions that you have. A list is important because you tend to forget the things that you do not record. Write why you want to achieve these ambitions and pray for God to show you the way forward if you are unclear about it. If you want a way to get started on your ideas, do the things that Jesus said really mattered to him. Help the people who are in need. Chasing after your dreams requires clear-headedness and wide eyes that are trained to follow the specific path in front of you, not the path in front of others. Bob Goff Your ambitions do not need to be big, noble, or trustworthy. Just be specific when you write them down. For instance, if you want to live a happy and fulfilling life, ask yourself what would make you happy and fulfilled. It could be money, a pet, or a trip. Ensure that you write it down so you can make plans toward it. Do not let your limiting beliefs prevent you from dreaming or aiming for a goal. When you start to acknowledge and name the ambitions that you want, your life becomes full of passion and purpose. A good place to start when collecting your thoughts is to spend some time considering what your unexecuted ambitions have been in the past. The ambitions worthy of pursuing usually come after a long period of vetting. When you vet your ambitions, you will likely end up with several possibilities in a range of sizes and difficulties. Small ambitions can be things you are just curious about and may not contain the purpose that defines your life. But larger ambitions are going to require a large sacrifice because they won't be achieved quickly or easily. Chapter 9. The path to your ambitions isn't linear. Keep moving through all the difficulties and failures until you win. Too many people let the improbability of their goals keep them from starting anything. One way to work on your ambition is to couple it with one of your already existing ambitions. Just because one ambition seems impossible to achieve doesn't mean it has to stay in the background. You can start small until you're able to achieve the entire dream. As you work on your ambitions, take your time. Do not rush the process, but do it at your own pace. Do whatever works for you. Whatever helps you come to a conclusion that is true and lasting. You cannot achieve an ambition without choosing it first. Bob Goff People erroneously think that your ambition is about figuring out the one thing you need to get there. But it is more than that. You need to look for an opportunity to keep moving forward and find some people you trust who have launched more things in the world than you have. Ask for help so that they'll help you start the process of achieving your own dreams. It is not easy to move your dreams to reality, but it is not impossible either. You can do it step by step. The path to getting there is to explore opportunities and see how you can navigate toward your ambitions. Stop expecting instant gratification and celebrate every small piece of progress. As you begin your journey, it is tempting to want it all mapped out, but life does not always follow your plans. Instead, try to discover new things on your journey. Although it takes a bit of focused intentionality, Exploring opportunities will give you the confidence to know that you are on the right trail. Tasks aren't always merely tasks. They can be stepping stones to achieving your dreams. A practical way to get some quick momentum on your ambition is research. Research will give you answers that you're looking for and teach you new things. The trick to success is to start now and not later because the more you search for opportunities, the more you get them. Chapter 10 Identify ideas that are no longer useful to you and replace them. You might be clinging to the things that are holding you hostage. It could be anything in your life, a routine, relationship, job, a deeply held belief caused by a childhood memory. Some of the most important work you will do is to identify who or what has been keeping you captive and break free. You can't move forward with your new ambitions without letting go of your old fears, and you can't let go of them without understanding them first. Your current failures are an echo of your past ones. As you understand the past behaviors, you get clues you need to figure out what is holding you back. The things that hold you back are limiting beliefs and will not go away by themselves. Fears are not fully conquered. They're just understood and given less power. Be strong and courageous and understand the fears that drive you. People who are looking for opportunities usually find them because they're willing to spend enough dedicated time looking for them. Bob Goff the opposite of limiting beliefs is launching beliefs. 
Launching beliefs can help you feel better and are a part of your interior life that can either boost momentum or get in your way. Launching beliefs are all the things you're already doing. These regular increments may look small, but they are what you need to get better. Who you are right now is an accumulation of all you have done and all that has happened to you. Your mindset can either improve or stunt your progress. Choose to be positive all the time. The most effective way to quit something that no longer serves you is by learning to say no once in a while. It is difficult to do this, but it is necessary to say no when it is not convenient for you to say yes. You should decline nicely and immediately because saying yes when you want to say no can become a really harmful habit. And bad habits can keep you away from your ambitions. It is normal to crave routine to bring a sense of structure to your days. Ask yourself if your routine is a good one. As you discard old routines, make a sincere effort to understand what made you stick with those routines. It might feel a little strange at first, but with consistency, you can build new habits and achieve your goals. Chapter 11. The ability to take risks can be the difference between average and extraordinary. If you have had ambitions for years and have not done anything about them, it would be worth asking yourself why. Jesus never told anyone to play it safe. He wants you to be brave, so you need to act like it and live in this truth. If you want some of your ambitions to work out, you need to take a few risks and cross some barriers. If you want to go after your ambitions, you have to move away from much of the comfort you've worked hard to create. And this might mean changing some things that you're used to. Knowing who to call is where it starts, but there's something else of equal importance. Know what you want to say when someone answers your call. Bob Goff As you try to bring an ambition into existence, you might have to deal with procrastination and lethargic moods, self-sabotage, and a lack of support from others. But these are not enough to stop you once you decide to go after your dreams. Once you get your ambitions clear, no amount of failure will keep you from trying again as long as you do not want to yield to disappointments. If you have clarity on what you want and why you want it, you will have what it takes to make as many attempts as possible. Little steps eventually become big steps. Do something each day that draws you closer to your goals. You need to figure out how to filter all of the inputs into your life to ensure you don't get off the track. These tips help you move forward with your ambitions without distraction. Make a list of your ambitions so you can understand what needs your attention. Set aside periods for yourself every day. At these times, you are focused on yourself. Make one phone call a day to someone that can help you make progress toward your ambition. Put reminders everywhere. It will help you remember your core values and ambitions. You could hire a virtual assistant to help you handle details that will help you reach your goals. Set small milestones to remind yourself that you are making progress, and then celebrate when you achieve a goal. Write down your thoughts every day. Consider writing 1,000 words so that you do not forget. Doing these things will help you stay engaged and win the game against distraction. They will help you live in the moment as you make progress. Chapter 12. Learn from your failures and continue making an effort to be better. Sometimes you work hard and do all the right things, but you still fail. When this happens, you don't need lectures or reproof. You need a hand to hold that will help you stand tall again. You are bound to make mistakes as you journey through life, and these mistakes can come in different forms. You have to figure out how to frame each setback in the overall picture of the pursuit of your ambitions. No setback is permanent once you decide it is not. Sometimes you just need to alter your approach or change your game plan. We discover and build our ambitions in installments. Bob Goff when there is something blocking progress on your ambition, don't bail out. Figure out what the problem is and change your approach. One way to deal with inevitable future setbacks is to take an inventory of how you've responded to setbacks in the past. It will give you some cheat notes on your own tendencies. Some things you try will work, others won't. Learn what you can from successes and setbacks and move on. The bigger and more audacious your ambition is, the more epic the failure can be. When you fail this way, you are not alone. The Bible gives you lots of people to relate to. Always have a plan for how you will respond to failure and cultivate things in your life that are more than the failure you are standing next to. Your actions may not be perfect, but failing because you tried is much better than failing because you're idle. As you chase your ambitions, there will be some days or even entire seasons when you're not moving as quickly as you want. If you find that you have lost enthusiasm, take a break and go back to the drawing board. 
Inform the people around you so that they can be a safe space for you while you figure out what you need to do. If you want to sustain belief in your ambitions, don't default to idle conversations, but be picky about your words. Pick lasting and meaningful words, and you will find peace and clarity. Conclusion Success does not come easy. You first need to dream big and focus on achieving those dreams. But the beautiful thing is that you are not alone. There are always people along your path that are willing to help you achieve your goals. But you need to be ready for these opportunities. Most opportunities come rarely, and you do not want to be caught unaware when you should be making the right moves. Knowing who you are, what you want, and where you are is crucial in your journey. Your self-awareness will ensure that you choose only what is right for you and avoid everything that goes against your dreams. As much as you want your plans to be the best, spending lots of time planning your steps is not going to help you succeed. There is something safe and comforting about the planning process. But you need to leave this safety and do what needs to be done. Stop wasting your time planning, but get started because there will never be a perfect time to launch your dreams. Stop talking about what you want to do someday. Get started. Don't wait for the right day, a full moon, or a fairy to land on your nose. Make up an eighth day of the week if you need to. Call it Start Day. Bob Goff. You always need other people when things get complicated to ensure that you are building quality friendships that will see you through the difficult times. For every time you are in need, someone else could have the solutions to your needs. Connect to people by taking a genuine interest in their journey. People usually see through a facade, so you should always try to be as honest as possible in your interactions. You have all that it takes to build the life that you want, no matter how big your dream is. If you are willing to put in the work, you can achieve it. Try this. Make a list of all the things you want to achieve and the actions to ensure that you do. Make a habit of doing something each day that increases your chances of being successful. Also, reach out to your friends whom you have not heard from in a long while. You could be helping them out in their time of need.